today to discuss about the topic social work in correctional settings. This topic is particularly important for learners pursuing the certificate program in social work and criminal justice system that is CSWCJS from IGNO. In this certificate program CSWCJS learners have to undertake two theory papers of four credits each and one practicum of eight credits. The first theory paper is MSW031 namely social work intervention in correctional settings and the second theory paper is MSW032 namely social work and criminal justice. The practicum component is MSWL033 which is social work practicum in correctional settings. Today we will discuss about social work in correctional settings which is based on the first theory course MSWL031 that is social work intervention in correctional settings. In today's discussion we aim to highlight the concept of correctional settings and describe the role of social worker in various types of correctional institutions in India. I have with me Dr. Rose Nembia Kim. Dr. Rose Nembia Kim is the director of School of Social Work at IGNO. Dr. Nembia Kim has launched the postgraduate diploma in social work among tribals. She is currently coordinating the certificate and diploma program on HIV and family education, the certificate program in tribal studies, and the Pan Africa e network project. Welcome, Dr. Rose. Thank you, Shantia. I also have with me Dr. Soumya. She is assistant professor at School of Social Work, IGNU. She is the coordinator of the Master of Social Work program. Welcome, Dr. Samia. Thank you, Shantni. As we are all aware, human beings in any society are expected to follow certain rules and regulations in order to maintain peace, law, and order. Restrictions and limits are placed on human behavior in the form of legislations, written laws, and institutional structure. People who violate these laws are identified, they are charged, and sentenced according to the procedure laid down by the law. This formal mechanism to control crime is called criminal justice system. So criminal justice system is designed to control crime and contribute towards a safe and orderly society. I would like to ask Dr. Rose, what are the components of criminal justice system in India? Thank you, Dr. Shantini. Now, um, a criminal justice system in India, if you say, consists of four primary components. That is the police, the prosecution, the uh, courts, and corrections. Now, the correctional services are uh, existent in our society from time immemorial for varying purpose and use. Now, the correctional services' uh, main purpose is to help the people or the inmates who are lodged in these uh, agencies to be reformed through correctional uh, training which have been provided to them so that uh, you know they are rehabilitated back into the society because rehabilitation is a very important aspect for the inmates that are lodged in these correctional uh, settings and to be reintegrated successfully into the society because when we talk about uh, the inmates who have been uh, kept in these kind of correctional settings the main priority is given to uh, them is to uh, help them understand society and help them to be uh, reintegrated in terms of uh, understanding what they have done wrong and how they can be uh, a part of the society again. So here I would say that the role of the professional social worker is of vital importance. So we can say that correction is one segment in the criminal justice system. Now as we understand a person who is accused of any crime is either convicted or they are acquitted by the court they can also be going under the trial. So persons who are convicted by the court are lodged in correctional institutions. Persons who are undergoing trial, in the, they are also lodged in the correctional institutions by order of the court. Thus, a correctional institution is a setting or a place where a person accused of or convicted of a crime is lodged for a specific period of time. Dr. Soumya, let us talk about the philosophy behind correction. Thank you, Dr. Shantini. Traditionally, uh, we know that the approach towards uh, crime control was guided by the concepts of deterrence. Here, three uh, concepts are important to note. One is deterrence, another is retribution, and third is offender incapacitation. Now, what do we mean by deterrence? 
Deterrence basically means that uh, there are various measures taken to prevent crime. Retribution means punishing uh, someone for the wrongdoing. An offender incapacitation refers to the act of making an individual incapable of committing a crime. But gradually there has been changes in the judiciary, in the lawmaking mechanism. And now it is replaced by a diversified framework, which is known as reintegrative uh, correctional strategies. And what does this mean? This means making a person uh, being adapted in the larger society being rehabilitative in the society from where the person belongs to. So uh, the strategies intend to release inmates in their transition back into the mainstream society. And the whole focus is on reshaping the behaviors of the convicted offenders. And there are certain goals behind it. The goals are first that the protection of the society against the crime, that is the most important thing. Secondly, to develop a sense of discipline and security. And thirdly, reform and rehabilitate them in the given social milieu through appropriate correctional interventions. And lastly, I can say is to equip them with uh, sufficient skills and abilities in order to help them lead a normal life. Right. So to, in order to follow the reintegrative philosophy, various kinds of uh, programs are also offered within the correctional institutions. For example, uh, inmates are offered with educational programs, welfare programs, vocational training programs, inmate family contacts are provided. Some self-discipline initiatives are also offered, such as remissions, leaves, transfer to open institutions, paroles. So these are the various services which are provided to the inmates in order to help them reintegrate into the society once they leave the institution. So the whole approach and philosophy behind the correctional setting nowadays is reformation. We have to look towards the reformation, reforming the individual and help him reintegrate in the society. Now we'll come to the principles which are followed in this regard. Dr. Rose, can you please tell us something about that? Yes, Dr. Shantini, you correctly informed that uh, the prisoners or the inmates who are lodged in these kind of uh, settings, they are segregated from the mainstream society in the form of uh, imprisonment. This is because they may be uh, a danger to the society or the safety of the public. Now, the main aim is to ensure that when they come out of these kind of imprisonment, they come out uh, as a better human being and uh, they create uh, a part of the larger society of which they were never a part of. Now, uh, talking about the principle, now with this objective, the Honorable Supreme Court of India in its various judgment has reiterated um, the following principle and I would like to quote, a person in a correctional setting does not become a non-person Second, a person in prison is entitled to all human rights within the limitation of imprisonment and there is no justification in aggravating the suffering already inherent in the process of incarceration. So these are the kind of principles which the government of India has established for people whom we imprisoned. Dr. Somya, I would like to ask you, how are correctional settings in India classified? Correctional settings are fragmented on the basis of several factors. And uh, these factors are like, first is by jurisdiction. If I talk about by jurisdiction, then it is central, then state and local. Then it is also done by criminal justice system, criminal justice function, and that is police, courts, and corrections. Thirdly, if it is done by location, then it is institutional and non-institutional, by age, adult and juvenile, by other factors like size of operation, sex of offender, type of offense, and special program. Right, so all these fragments basically come under a master classification and which are governed by statutory rules mm -hmm. and legislations, like we have the Prisons Act of 1894, and then we have the other social legislations like Juvenile Justice Care and Protection of Children Act 2015, Immoral Trafficking Prevention Act 1956, and Bombay Prevention of Begging Act 1959. Now let us discuss the correctional institutions set up under the Prisons Act 1894. But before that, let us understand the concept of prisons. Dr. Rose, what are prisons? 
See, uh, you see the Prison Act, like you mentioned in uh, 1894, it governs the administration and the management of the prisons in India. Now, the constitutions assign custody and corrections of criminals to the state and territories, and the Ministry of Home Affairs, which is under the government of India, is responsible for the administration of prisons in India. Now, the day-to-day -day administration of prisons in all the states and union territories are governed by the respective prison manuals which are containing rules regulations orders and the various amendments which is uh, on a regular basis inserted in these things and uh, the day-to-day -day administration of prisoners rest on principles incorporated in the prisons act uh, 1894 and the prison act of 1900 and the transfer of prisoners act of 1950 now an inspector general of prison uh, he administers he or she administers uh, prison affairs in each state and uh, the territory right Dr. Soumya, what kind of services are available to prison inmates in India? There are several services which are available to prison inmates at present. And first of all, the most important is education. And as we all are aware, and I would also like to uh, tell us to our viewers, that IGNU has done a pioneering role in the field of education. Like for uh, across all India, we have in several jails, our uh, study centers and uh, through the study centers we are offering several programs start ranging from certificate programs some of the bachelor's and master's programs are also uh, offered to the jail inmates which is a pioneering role of IGNU so one is education secondly then there is uh, also a vocational training and uh, employment opportunity which is quite relevant and uh, important because that's how they will get the, sk the skills needed for them and they can, after they are released, they can use those skills to better their life. Then there are also healthcare benefits uh, which is provided to them, healthcare services are there. Then there is prisoner panchayat and also uh, there's aftercare of released prisoners. Right. So I must mention here about Tihar Jail. You know, uh, Tihar Jail has come up as a model prison and it is often referred to as the New Delhi Correctional Model. So yes. there, they have uh, developed various programs like educational programs, cultural activities, vocational activities, moral education, which are in tune with the current correctional philosophy. So uh, these have been going on for a long time in Tihar Jail now. And in the last 10 years, the process has accelerated and it has also received worldwide attention. Dr. Samya, please tell us about the role of social workers in correctional settings. Okay, uh, there are several roles which social workers can do. Uh, number one, it's uh, they can be a probation officers. They can also help in parole, getting parole. Then they also work in the area of mental health. Uh, they work in the area of casework and counseling because there are several uh, inmates. They might undergo some, certain emotional problems, certain uh, physical problems. So even connecting to the required services, for example, the, we just talked about vocational training or healthcare facilities or even education. In order to even connect to these services, social workers play an important role. So, and even to uh, help in getting probation and or to help uh, getting a parole, their role is quite significant. Right. So, social work education, when we talk about, it is kind of a training. It's a very unique program. We, we are given training uh, in, in, uh, to be a professional and uh, various fields we cover cover and there are various several methods in social work like casework and group work which are very much applicable when we talk about role of social worker in correctional setting now we also are trained to work with individuals as in casework and then we are trained to work in uh, in groups and we work in various settings so it is like a tailor made kind of a you know, professional program where we are also trained to work with offenders, not only at their individual level, but also in the community level, the group level. We, we talk to their families. We think about their reintegration in the society. The, we talk, think about their rehabilitation, how they can integrate and merge and work, you know, once they are out of the correctional institution, how they can live a productive life. So this is the whole right. aim of the social work education. And uh, with this, we will come to the uh, you know, specific roles of professional social worker in prisons. Dr. Rose, could, uh, Rose, could you please throw some light? Uh, yes, uh, Dr. Shantini, you mentioned very correctly that uh, the social worker has a lot of role to play, and especially in the prison settings. Now, when we talk about the prison setting, we can uh, talk about the casework with individual. Because when we talk of incarceration, that is uh, loss of freedom,
freedom and uh, liberty that is because of the imprisonment then what happens is an individual person goes through emotional stress and uh, there a lot of crisis which is in and around not only within him or her but also within the family structure so because of that a person may go towards a depression or there may be mood swing uh, anxious uh, or anxiety and uh, the family also suffers a lot during these times so it is important that social worker plays a very important role in terms of uh, counseling the person talking to the person taking out the case as to why the person has committed this crime and why uh, uh, the society will not be accepting such crimes and what the uh, the individual can do to come out of that situation and also it is important uh, that uh, the social worker provides them with um, a kind of a training you know a realization uh, that uh, self worth and self dignity of an individual is important and that uh, they should be able to do because in social work when we talk about case work there are certain uh, uh, strategies that we follow so within these the case work will really help uh, to help the individual come out of that uh, problem setting and become a reformed individual to be placed back into the society right in social work actually we also give emphasis emphasis on the person's individual you know uniqueness we have the we have the principle of individualization right. where we you know stress importance to the person's innate potential right right so every individual has a potential for growth and development so mm. in social work we think in those lines and we also see how the inmate can you know develop himself change his behavior and we try to look the individual in his particular context you know rather than look looking at him only as an offender or someone who has done crime committed crime yes. we have to see what like, are the if i may add what yes. you just said because before a social worker before working with the individual uh, the social worker should also understand why did the person get into such crimes and that the concept of stigmatization and discrimination by the society towards the criminal becomes so huge that the individual might uh, behave in a very different manner and might become a kind of a rebel yeah. so that is why they have to keep that kind of thing in their mind before having any kind of intervention with the uh, criminals if we have basically non judgmental attitude is what is uh, most important and that is being practiced by social work and that is so unique about it right so we also emphasize the internal factors of the individual and also the external factors which right. are surrounding the individual exactly. that made him commit the crime and mm. how we can intervene as a yes. social worker right. also we have uh, direct access to the people who have you know they are captive audience and we can directly access to for example in prisons we can access the prison administration and work with them towards mm. the reformation of the you know inmate so uh, we also help the uh, we also help in role adaptation of the individual and also a role adjustment within the prison setting so dr samia there is a uh, provision of probation can you briefly talk about probation in india yeah probation is basically it's a derived from the latin word uh, to test or to prove it means to test or to prove and uh, when a person is found guilty and his crime is being proved still the court decides that the person can be doing you know he the person should be placed in the community and he or she can do much better than behind bars then uh, he or she is released on probation and there's a probation officer who looks after the person in the community and there are certain assigned rules and regulations which the person on probation has to follow and uh, accordingly the probation officer looks after it and uh, the court decides and there are certain only there are certain listed offenses for which probation can be granted not every crime uh, is listed there and it depends on the discretion of the judge the magistrate so in this session we have uh, talked about the philosophy behind correction and the role of social worker in various uh, correctional setting especially in the prison system i thank dr rose nambia kim and dr somya for giving their valuable comments and i hope this will be interesting for our listeners thank you, thank you.